good morning Fano. so this week I just want to go over um, Bana grass and why we want to manage it before it gets to this stage so for those that haven't heard of us uh, use the term senescence this is what we mean so you can see the whole plant is under quite a state of stagnancy it's reached a real maturity in its leaves and its canes and as a grass the worst thing for grass is actually to be choked by its own foliage so you can see here it's just thick thickly choked up with all its foliage and it doesn't have much room for any of the new sprouts underneath to really make it through so this is not at all what you want to have and this is what uh, we try and avoid by doing our heavy pruning and our regular sort of pulsing chop and drop pruning of the food forest so that every plant in the system is lush and vigorous in growth and healthy and never gets into this sort of senescency stage. Another big indicator of senescent stage of a banner grass is when it starts sprouting out the sides here of the canes. You can see it's sprouting out the canes themselves um, because no new shoots are able to come through so a lot of regrowth is coming from the very buds themselves and all the canes are very mature well formed uh, you don't want it to get to this stage this is where management becomes a lot harder as well and and it becomes a fire risk because you've got all that dry material there um that can just be yeah caught up in flames in no time so this is not at all the situation you're wanting this is senescence so i'm gonna now go through and fix it up um so i'll be chopping back all the canes right down to the bottom i'll rip off all those dry leaves and, um, and yeah, just free it up a bit, expose it up to some more light, and then all that energy can pump back down to the ground. So you can see this is much more open and free of all that choking leaf matter um, that was surrounding all these canes before. And you can even see that here there's some young shoots that are wanting to come up which are really struggling um, to do so uh, in, in the past situation. So by opening up, by keeping it open by, by keeping this grass um, open and not maturing into this senescent state, um, we're able to rejuvenate and actually have this clump producing more nitrogen-rich, vital biomass um, than if we were to just leave it growing to such a senescent state. What happens when it's in senescence is it no longer puts on new growth it just stores that energy as carbon in these in these canes um, so even though it's still good biomass and we still value it um, as a resource 
it's meaning that it's not able to actually take up as much sunlight and transferring that sunlight into sugars that then stimulates the bacterial and fungal life in the soil. So we want all our plants to be in that optimal fast growth, vigorous growth mode. And in order to do so, we need to keep them in that vegetative growth. So in that, in that state of putting on growth, turning that sunlight into sugars. Once it reaches maturity and starts declining and getting into that senescent state, it slows down in growth, it becomes stagnant, and it stops being as efficient in transferring that sunlight into sugars because it's not putting on any growth. So we want to try and keep everything in that vital growth. And you see here, I've left one cane standing. Um, this is the sort of cane that's all right to have. You can see it's, it's mainly nitrogen rich, lush. It still has all its very outside coating on, so it doesn't have that formed cane-like structure. It's still in that shoot phase. So we want to have a lot of canes at this date and then prune them back not far further than this growth before they get senescency um, and develop these canes. So I'm going to try and keep them to that sort of vigorous growth, high nitrogen and prune them back more often than not. Pruning them back means that this clump stays open and we don't have that same smothering with all the foliage and the shoots can keep rejuvenating themselves. So I've trimmed this back as much as I can with the machete. Now I'm going to come in and saw off all these canes at the base to really give it a good restart. If I was to leave it like this, uh, we'd get into a really messy situation where all of the nodules that are still exposed here above ground would start producing and you'd have that same look as I showed you earlier where the nodules were producing their own little growths. So that's not what you want because it'll just become this big messy bush um, that's trying to you know grow and rejuvenate but it's just going to create this weird hedge thing that's further going to smother all the shoots further down and so you really just want to ensure that um, you cut them right down to the base so that the next thing that's growing is the fresh shoots and nothing's growing from these existing canes which will just become a really big mess so that's the next stage so you can do this with a chainsaw as well but um, sometimes I find it's nicer doing things by hand slower with machete or or um, a saw just because then you can really see what's going on you can see all the different shoots and be aware of them a little bit more carefully um, that said, if you did chop the roots down, there's enough energy and growth in this area here that those shoots will quickly come up again on their own. So by all means, do it with a chainsaw. Um, uh, I, I do it a lot for when you know we have bigger patches. Um, but just to show you, totally easy still to do it with a handsaw. Um, but yeah, it does take a bit more time and you can just imagine if you had a whole row of this as part of your syntropic system, just how much uh, longer you take doing everything by hand. That said, of course, the other point of addressing the situation and, and why we don't want it to get to that senescency phase is because the amount of labor that's required um, when you do let things get to that state versus if you're on top of them and you're keeping them in that rejuvenated state, then you basically can just go with your sickle and machete slice off the sort of succulent young shoots as they grow and and keep it in that really lush um, easy to prune easy to manage um, high nitrogen rich and and photosynthesizing plant um, that you want it to be so yeah that's how you manage a banner grass clump and this would apply to your sugarcane or your miscanthus or any sort of grassy clump that you've got in your system uh, you want to give it a good reset when it hits that sort of 
senescence, stagnant state, um, and ideally keep it in that rejuvenated state, which makes management so much easier. That said, um, this whole um, intervention here took me just 10 minutes, so it's definitely doable. And um, yeah, hopefully it's given you insights as to how to approach what may seem like a daunting uh, situation and just get into it. Um, you really feel the energy coming back to you once it's reset, just saying thank you, um, a nice cleansing, a nice reset. So yeah, once you know why and once you do it, you really understand um, just how much plants really value this sort of intervention, especially your grasses. Um, but this applies to all your different plants as well. You want to avoid that senescence. You want to avoid that hormone that creates that stagnancy in all your other vegetation. You want to keep your whole system in that rejuvenated state. So yeah, um, thanks again for joining us um, this week on Patreon and I uh, look forward to seeing what the comments have to say. And um, yeah, thanks again and see you next week. Ka kite.